five ways to tackle your renovation costing. Budget blowouts are common in renovating, but costing the job can be time consuming and anyone that doesn't have a lot of experience in renovating may be tempted to take some shortcuts and just pluck a figure out of the air and hope for the best. I know this because I've done it and I've proven without a shadow of a doubt that it absolutely doesn't work. So how does someone starting out in the game manage more than an uneducated guess as to what the renovation costs are going to be? Before I go on, I should clarify the term renovation. It has very broad interpretations from a purely cosmetic makeover to a minor floor plan rework right through to the varying degrees of structural complexity, including additions and subdivision. As far as costs are concerned, the actual renovation is the tip of the iceberg. However, most of the purchasing, holding and selling costs are reasonably easy to determine. For this exercise, we're dealing with the actual renovation costs only. Now, there are a couple of things you need to do before you start. The first is to prepare a comprehensive scope of work. A scope of work is a list of every item of work that needs to be completed and how it's to be done. This document is then broken down into the individual trades. It's important to keep in mind that the more detail you're able to include, the less room there is for error or omissions. Here are five ways to go about costing your renovation. First one is to use benchmarks. This is an acceptable method of estimating purely cosmetic renovations. It is generally accepted that a property can be upgraded cosmetically with a spend of around 10% of the value of the property. This does not allow for high cost repairs such as rewiring or re-stumping or any building or structural work. So a simple way to cost a simple renovation is to take the 10% of the property value for your cosmetic upgrades and add to it with quotes for any of the elements of work that fall outside the realm of purely cosmetic, including high cost repairs. The second way is to go to tender. The most reliable way to estimate the cost is to take your scopes of work and materials lists and get quotes on every trade and material. It can be slow and difficult if you've not yet purchased the property, but it is essential if you are tackling a renovation with any degree of structural complexity. So the next way is to call the professionals. The best way and the most time effective way is to get a reliable estimate of your renovation costs from a quantity surveyor. For less than you might think, a quantity surveyor will prepare a renovation cost plan for your project. We use MCG quantity surveyors. This not only gives you peace of mind, but it will also add credibility to your proposal for finance. The next method is to refer to the guidelines and publications from reliable industry bodies. Archie Centre produces a free renovation cost guide annually, offering a range of pricing for most elements of a renovation with indexations for different states. Rawlinson's construction cost guide is the quantity survey surveyor's bible and provides a huge range of information for costing your building work, but it requires a level of building knowledge to be able to extract the information you need. The Rawlinson's Cost Guide is updated annually and at around $300 a copy, it's not overly cheap, but it can be found in some university libraries and you just need to make sure that you're using the current issue. So the only other option now is to go gold class. If it's all too much for you and you really want the limo ride by having the renovation plan and costings done for you, you can engage the services of an experienced renovation consultant. They'll advise you on the best changes to make to improve the value of the property, how to go about it and what it will cost you. Some will even do the renovation for you. 
Whatever the method you choose to cost your project, it is important to remember that renovations have an uncanny knack of producing nasty little surprises. So keep those to a minimum by being rigorous with your pre-purchase due diligence. And for the unavoidable, make sure you include at least a 10% contingency as a buffer.